Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are. We are about to can some jalapenos. So I had picked some jalapenos from my front garden a few days ago and then this morning I added more to it because more had popped on there. So here we go with a whole pot of them. They have been washed in cold water. Let's go over things that you need for this process. Okay, so you need some gloves. You don't have to have gloves, but if you do without gloves, make sure you don't touch your face, your mouth, your eyes, all that stuff. Um, don't do it. If you don't have gloves, you can make do because that's what I'm gonna do today because I can't find my gloves. I have a sandwich size bag because I have little hands. And I'm going to carefully pick these up and cut them. If this starts getting annoying with me, I'm just gonna toss this aside and go barehanded. So that's one thing you can do. You're also going to need pickling salt. I don't have any pickling salt and you can do it without pickling salt. Your jalapenos may not be as crispy as you might want though. So I just canned a bunch of jalapenos last year and they had pickling salt. So these won't have it, but I am using kosher salt and I'm also using pint size jars, okay? I have my jars getting hot in my canner and I'm using a water bath canner, not a pressure canner. You can do it either way. Um, so this is a pint, this is a half pint. I like to do my jellies and jams in this one, and I do my jalapenos in these right here. Okay, so you're gonna wanna have your, either a huge stock pot or your water bath canner. Fill that midway with water. You can put your jars in there, or you can put your jars in the oven at about 220 degrees just to have them warm. But make sure you wash your jars before doing that. You want everything to be sanitized and sanitary. Okay, so down to it. We're doing kosher salt. We're doing turmeric. This is optional. I use it for health benefits. And we're doing minced garlic. So we're doing one teaspoon of the turmeric or either a half teaspoon. And then one teaspoon of garlic. So when making your brine, you are going to use two cups of water and two cups of vinegar. So in this pot, I have two cups of water. To it, I'm going to add one cup of apple cider vinegar. Then I'm going to add one cup of white distilled vinegar. Now I am going to add my kosher salt, two tablespoons. But I'm only gonna add, cause this is optional, you don't have to add the turmeric. I'm only gonna do a half a teaspoon of it. I don't want it to overwhelm it. I will add my garlic directly to my jars. Take this, put it on the stove, bring it to a bowl, bring it back down, and let it simmer while you are getting your peppers together. You're gonna see how this works with the, the bag. So cut the tip of the jalapeno pepper off and then just slice about an inch. We want the seeds and all. I don't know if I'm gonna use these, these bags. And then you just put this aside.
I just finished cutting up all of the jalapeno peppers. As you can see, I ended up with this bowl and that bowl. These are my seeds that I'm going to sit aside to dry them out and use them at a later date. You need your white distilled vinegar. You're gonna use that with the paper towel to wipe the rim of the jars when you are done filling them. I'm also using a funnel, magnetic wand, and my spoon, and also a debubbler. Don't forget a second pot to have your lids in. You want those hot when you apply those to the jars. You're going to stir this up really good. This is your brine. I did add um, a half cup of sugar to this, marina sugar, not the white sugar. You're gonna have your ladle ready and you're gonna need your funnel. So all you're gonna do, and again, I don't have my gloves on. I wash my hands as if I was still working at the hospital and you do that whole scrub up before you have surgery. So what I did was chop these up all you're going to do now is put them straight into the jar and if you put too much just take it out add a couple more to fill up the space because you're gonna leave a half inch head space on it, half inch, okay? And just repeat the same process with all of them. left right here will go into Ziploc bags and put into the freezer. All that's left to do for this part is to start funneling your brine. And that happens. I didn't put my garlic in. So it's not too late. I'm going to do one teaspoon of garlic. trying to clean my kitchen as I go. Um, let's finish this up. Next, you want to debubble and get the air pockets out. Take your paper towel, put some vinegar on it, and wipe around the top of the jars. Now you want to use a magnetic wand and get the lids and place them on the jars. Get your rings and make sure they are fingertip tight. Now it's time to place your jars in your water bath canner or pressure canner, however you're doing it.
Now you want to lower your jars into the war bath canner very gently, not to splash, and make sure you have at least an inch of water over the top of the lids. If it's too much, then just scoop a little bit out. So it's time for me to add the lid, wait for it to come to a rolling boil, then put my timer on for 15 minutes. Depending on your area, you may need to do it for 10 minutes. If you don't have a water bath canner, you can also use a regular stock pot, long as it's big enough for you to put your jars in and be able to cover the lids with one inch of water. Use your rings, your bands in the bottom to keep the glass from touching the actual pot. I also had bell peppers in the front with my, my jalapeno peppers. So what I did was pick some of them, chop them up, place them in Ziploc bags, labeled the bag and threw them in the freezer so i do my best to seed save as much as possible this will cut back on how much you're spending on buying seeds you're going to turn your eyes off leave the lids off let it sit for about five minutes and then take them out. Okay, so you have them done. They've already started pinging as soon as I started taking them out. You know that your items are sealed when they are pressed down and they don't make this sound. If you can do that when you test them after they cool, it's still good. It just didn't seal good enough. So you can put those in the refrigerator and eat them. But the rest will go in wherever you're going to store your long-term food. Hopefully it is in a cool, dark place. You don't want to store it somewhere hot. And that's it, you guys. I hope you enjoyed the video.